But yeah, I've already started recording. So. Oh, super! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I, I like to do that. I like to do a, just a cold open. Just ah, by the way. Well, it, it, to me, it's like I've noticed when I start a conversation, I'm like, okay, and we're going. Like people <laughs> freeze up, but if you actually find a conversation, Natural. just click into it. It's my face red. I feel like my face is red now. No, no. Well, I, I only see the blue from the light to, to your left. Oh, well, good. Yeah. That that neutralizes it. <laughs> that in my art classes. Well, hello, Miss Ember Solis. Solis. Oh, Solis, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, also known as Anne. It's my secret identity. <laughs> oh, your secret identity. Well, it's not very secret. It's not. <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, your name has actually been brought up to me twice in the past few weeks. Really? Yeah. and I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because, uh, because you and I have known each other for six years, mm-hmm. just about. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I know. Time flies, right? <laughs> and... You know, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I know you did music before. You're always really interested into it, but I didn't know if you traveled around with other musicians. Like, I don't know your story behind that. Mm-hmm. But like, of the years that we know each other, only recently, like, people started. You know, oh, have you heard of Ember Solis? You know, and, and like, Aww. yeah. But then they're like, then they'll. My point is, is they'll come back and be like, I think, I think your name is Anne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's cool yeah so like they're, they're on to you so it's, it's not a secret <laughs> <laughs> i need a better mask <laughs> the yeah. bangs aren't enough <laughs> yeah besides you know your face yeah <laughs> you know that whole thing I put extensions in i mean what more do they want <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah again we were in a group together uh that obsession which yes. really lived up to its name <laughs> on at least one third of the party of that um uh. and uh I've legit had nightmares about that, by the way. Oh, side note. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to name names here, but uh, it's that whole situation ended up bad. Can I tell you about a very specific dream I had? Yeah, yeah absolutely. This is crazy. I have very vivid dreams, by the way. Uh, but welcome to the club. Really? Oh, yeah. Maybe it's an artist thing. I don't know. I uh, So I had a dream that we were in practice, and my our old band member was the bassist. But also, my bassist was there. And he's, um, our old band member, started making like a fuss about things and started saying how I was this and that and this is stupid and these songs are horrible. And I was like, do you see these guys? Am I allowed to swear? Yeah. I yeah. said, do you see these guys? I would take a bullet for these motherfuckers. <laughs> like, I would push you in front of a fucking train. <laughs> uh, and yeah. still the, the, the toxicity wave still... <laughs> Still show up every now and again oh, with that. God. That was remember when we had that drummer. Oh God, he was a trip. Yeah, and like such an ego. Right, and they, like he played a song or whatever, and I was proud about him. Yeah, and like you were complimenting, uh, you you know your husband complimented the song or something like that, and you're like, oh, you know, my husband just you know he said this was sounded really nice, and then out of nowhere he's just like, I don't give a fuck what your husband thinks. Ew, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Like, no. Yeah, he went off, and then like I sent him a personal message. Like I, I fired him from the band for it. You know. I, that was <laughs> that was the reason. Yeah, that that was the reason. I, I told I said you don't talk to him. You don't talk to uh-huh. us like that. Well, thanks. I, I'm surprised you don't remember that because I don't. I sent that message to you, and you told me like again that your husband was. You know, said I think Steve handled that in the best way possible. Because I was very like <laughs> nice. I was like, well, I I understand that you believe that, and you're wrong, and I don't want you to be in our group anymore. Nice. You know, like yeah. Yeah. But, well, that was obviously a lot more impactful for you because you had to handle the situation. But yeah. I just remember him being an asshole. So yeah, he was an it. asshole. Yeah, and then oh, his last little like. You know, jab to me was, uh, well, you're welcome for the free music lesson. Oh Jesus, I do remember him saying that. <laughs> it's that like, was a horrible. God, what an ego. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was very egotistical. Anyway, that's that was when I was just learning how to figure out how to not be in bands with people. Right? Yeah, it's <laughs> you that's know very important chemistry. Yes, I you guess. know that's, that's why like I'm so thankful for Ron Jay. 
like we have a good chemistry together. And I know yeah. if you and I ever like decided to do a side project, I'd, I'm very confident that would be a very good chemistry. We've always been very appreciative and patient with each other, yeah. probably more patient on your end than mine. Um, <laughs> Because I can't harmonize at all. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget days that you're just like, no, Steve. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But it, it's it's fun. Um, I'm, I'm glad we've we've stayed in touch, you know, in, in whatever ways we have. But, uh, but it's also been fun to watch you go down these different adventures. Mm-hmm. Um because you and I seem to be on this parallel adventure sometimes. Yeah. Uh, some, something in, you know, the, the, the realm of life. Like, we, we, we just, we have a same, some sort of same path, you know, uh, on maybe the artistic level. I don't know. But when I started doing YouTube, then you came and started doing YouTube. Ah, uh, yeah, that was, yeah. It was Rizza. Was <laughs> yeah, Rizza. That was a fun thing. That was fun. Oh, and YouTube just bitch slapped you, right? They to... sure did. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. Uh, that was, I was a year into RZA and then YouTube got sued by some governmental something or other saying, you can't collect information on children to sell to advertisers, basically. Gave them a little slap on the wrist and a few million dollars in fines. And then all of a sudden we have YouTube kids regulation. So now you can't click on like put in subscribe buttons or in video links you can't do comments you can't do all the things that tell the algorithm that you exist basically yeah so if you weren't already established and i think i had 150 subscribers at that point that i worked really hard to get yeah and it was just like the amount of time i was spending on that I had a green screen in my basement. I had the lights. I, did. I remember watching the videos. I was yeah. like, God, it's like you went all in. They were legit. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I worked really hard on that. And all the music and everything. And I don't know. I think I'm hoping that somebody will like stumble upon that someday and be like, I will pay you $5 million for Risa Kids. And I'll be like, sold. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll pay you nothing and I'll come up with my own Raza. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> it wouldn't be anything without you. You, uh, th- those are so fun to watch because it. <laughs> I, it was watching a character. I was watching you play a character, you know, mm-hmm. and obviously it's intertwined with you. Mm-hmm. But that was the fun of it for me, you know. It's like, like I remember Seth and I uh, would watch it, and he's like, "That's the same Anne." I'm like, "Yeah," <laughs> and he's like, "Wow." I'm like, "Yeah, I know." She just created this. Thing, you know, and, and went all in. Uh, yeah, I guess they expect people to live off Patreon or something like that yeah. on YouTube now for that. I just remember, like, like everybody on YouTube was worried about, I don't remember the, what the acronyms were or whatever, COPPA. Mm, that was it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just, like, even channels that had no business of being fearful were fearful, like, because you, YouTube just stepped in and took a huge portion of their, you know, uh, content creators and said, Oh, well, you're not getting paid anymore, by the way, because, you know, kids suck. So, <laughs> and your whole channel was based around kids. Like, there was yeah. no escaping that. There's no escaping. But <laughs> people still do it, though, which I don't understand. But maybe it's just product placement. Well, yeah. I mean, sponsorships and, again, Patreon. You know, um, I, don't, I don't know if you have to have a certain amount of subscribers to uh, become a member of a channel. I don't, I don't know how that works, I but there's no a, I know there's a member button like where you pay a monthly fee and you, you have all access. It's almost like a Patreon, but like on YouTube instead of a separate thing. But yeah, um, uh, maybe maybe you could rebirth it somewhere. <sighs> Not unless Seems somebody exhausting. wants to produce it for me, right. like, honestly. Like, yeah, that... I wouldn't mind getting dressed up and bouncing around, but <laughs> like, it's the rest of it that just took so much time. Oh, yes, the, the rest of the iceberg of editing. Yes. The nightmare. Is that, ridiculous I but mean, fun like when it happens you're like ah oh, that's yes, so cool yeah yeah <laughs> you, no you're absolutely correct when when you actually see your work pay off you're like ah oh, now i know why i do this yes but then like that six hours you spent before that you're like oh my god why do i do this yeah. why am i doing this like it's 2 a.m and i'm <laughs> editing a video about the letter g why <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what made you come up with with uh, Riza. With Riza? Yeah. Mm. Blippy. Blippy? Was the inspiration for Riza, yes. What the hell's a Blippy? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Blippy is a children's YouTube channel, and he it's just a dude that dressed in suspenders and went around to playgrounds and played on the playgrounds, and he was real goofy. Hey, cool, this slide is the color red. going to be wacky. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it just, it just exploded. Like, he took off millions, millions of followers. Is that the guy having controversy right now? I wouldn't be surprised. I've heard some things about his past, but why? I just I just recently was listening to a podcast and somebody was talking about a YouTube kid uh, creator, you know, for, for for YouTube and like now it's like he's got some weird things going on. I, I don't know what they are off the top of my head. I almost want to Google it and find <laughs> out. I've heard some some rumors. I don't, but you know, the internet. Who knows if they're real? Right. Yeah. People get mad that other people are successful. Try to cut him down. But um, yeah, I was like, man, if he can do it, I could. I could do that. Like I'm, I'm bubbly and kids like me and I can sing. So I have that too. And I wrote a lot of kids songs that are actually really good. I think so. <laughs> Ember might come out with the kids album. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? Why there's, not? there's your segue. When, once Ember <laughs> takes off, you're like, Oh, now, now we have, you know, a sub company that you know, we do kids entertainment uh, through our own network mm. instead of YouTube. You know, we have, we have the equipment. Entrepreneurial. I like it. What's his name? Blippy. B L I P P I. Well, that that sounds brainwashing right there. <laughs> my son, my son called him Blappy for the longest. He was like Blappy. <laughs> Couldn't quite. That's so funny. Ugh. Let's see if I can find anything on this dude. Rizza, 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 it's a girl. Yeah, I don't know. No, not, not, nothing that's popping up instantly. But must be someone else. Yeah. So once Riza went down in flames because of YouTube, God which I, I felt so bad for you. <laughs> I did. I was I was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. it's one of those. No, like, the person you should really feel bad for is my husband. <laughs> He's like all that time and the money and the time. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I felt bad for him. <laughs> well, that, well, 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 honey, that's what you get for marrying an artist. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is what's going to happen. This is, this is, He's used to it now. <laughs> yeah, it's not the first and it won't be the last. Yeah. Love you. Good night. Um, <laughs> so, like, and then you kind of, uh, like, I don't, uh, from my perspective, you kind of, like, backed off into the distance for a little bit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, I, I, I <laughs> But I'd only, like, see you, like, you, you came out to my show, like, once or twice, um, which I appreciate that. It was always mm-hmm. a pleasant <laughs> surprise. Um and then Ember Solis come, comes out. Am I saying that right? Because I've been calling it yeah. Solace and up until like Solis. 10 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. So um, what, what, what happened? What happened? Like, uh, what, big, happened? Cause, cause, what happened was, because <laughs> no, what I see is I see you jumping from a character to another character. Mm, interesting. It, it, you know, it, but I still see Anne, you know, in the in the whole realm of it, but like, like I'm just wanting to know, like, is that intentional? Like, what what's the mindset behind? Did you see the liquor talking? Did you see that happen? That was a little blip in the radar, in between those two things. Yeah, yeah. The that was Anne. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought for some reason I thought the liquor talking and Ember Sol- uh, Solis was they're not intertwined. Mm-mm. And but the liquor talking is that still a thing? Not with me, no. Oh, see, I wasn't aware of that. I've been sharing liquor talking stuff when I would see it, and you're not even a part of the damn thing. <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't be against it if I just, if I didn't have like a nine to five, but, yeah, you know, priorities. So, uh, yeah, so the lick, so COVID happened, <clears throat> and I started going crazy. After RZA, I was so like beaten down. I tried to tell myself that I didn't really need music and I didn't really need, Entertain, be an entertainer and that was just kind of a silly dream or whatever and so I tried to like put it to bed and then COVID hit and I started going crazy and I'm like I gotta sing something <laughs> like I can't ah. and so I went on to Facebook and I uh, went on to the like Columbus musicians page or something like that and I was like female vocalist looking to start a band I actually wanted to do like an alt rock band with originals and I got some bites here and there, um, but the the pianist was Paul, who was in the liquor talking, and um, he was like, yes, I want to do that, but also, you want to do this, it's a cover band, I was like, oh yeah, sure, 
And I just had so much fun with the cover band. I was like, this is cool. And like, Paul's a phenomenal pianist, and Souk is an amazing drummer. And they were just both grown and mature, and it was fun. So we did some some covers, and through that, um, I got hired by a guy to sing at his party. And it was like, they called it the Voodoo Ballyhoo. And what they do is there's like three core members of the band and then they just hire in other musicians to form a like mega band for one event. And it's just super fun. So we learned some like Halloween-ish type stuff and like swing and um, the pianist that was hired into that band is now my co-writer for Ember Solis. So the pianist started coming to my shows with the liquor talking and like giving me these like ridiculous tips and stuff like that, like <laughs> like in our buckets. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, oh, you said ridiculous tips. I was thinking like, like you, you should. Yeah. Yeah. yeah don't grow your corn it. in the winter. Yeah. Right, no. <laughs> no, he would like just throw money at us. <laughs> and um, then in January, I I was planning for that. Um, the fundraiser for the Valentine's Day thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked, I called and asked him if he would like to contribute a song. And he said, um, sure, but also, I really want to write music with you. He's like, I just have so many songs in my head and you have the entertainment part and I think they would, we would just be a great fit. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's do that. And we just, we formed, Gadley Music, which is a company we're both 50-50, and he is amazing. He's He writes kind of jazzy, but he knows all the things, and he can, like, mix and match, and it's very unique. And then usually what ends up happening is I will, like, write basically a poem or lyrics and send it to him, and then he'll send me back, like, an amazing song. <laughs> like, oh, my God, how do you do that? So yeah, so that's Ember Soli. So and uh, I'm rambling. The reason it's a oh you you can ramble all you want. It's fine. <laughs> we ramble all the time in here. It's a it's a stage name, right? So the the original intent was it was just going to be me, like Ember Soli, the singer. Um, and I just think Anne is boring. I don't like my name very much. <laughs> Anne, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want something like pretty. So Ember is rain in Latin and Solis is sun. And it represents the full spectrum of human emotion, which is what my music is about. I want it to be deep and meaningful and healing. And I want someone to listen to it and go, oh, me too. And so that's what the name represents. Did I answer your question that you asked yeah. like 10 minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, I, that was, I just wanted to know where that came from. And yeah. that's, that's where that came from. That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, um, so how, like, I, I, you guys seem to be out just trying to get your name out right mm -hmm. now. I see, mm -hmm. you know, Bossies, you know, and, and El Dorado's, was that a recent, or is that the liquor talking? I can't remember. That's liquor talking. See, I'm sorry. But I'm talking I, I, to them about getting a gig there, yeah. Yeah, because I, I've been, I've been, I've fused those two things together. I, I really just thought it was like an evolution of the band, like, uh, so I really missed the train on that being a separate adventure. <laughs> it's okay. But, uh. It like, happened very quietly. What, what. So what are your goals with this? So, well... Because you're still 9 to 5. You still have that same, you know... Mm -hmm. that, I know. Yeah, right. I, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I didn't expect what I, I... I expected amazing songs to be written, and we were going to actually try to just go straight to, like, international, possibly just songwriting and selling our songs, or having me as the front woman, just like a pop star, like like Britney or whatever, Lady Gaga, that kind of a thing. Like, it's just Ember, right? But then, like, I have this amazing band now, and they're all amazing. Like, I don't even know. I just feel so honored. They're, you can just tell them a chord, and they're like, oh, yeah, we got it. And there's no drama, and it's so nice, and it's so fun. And I can tell you there's something so crazy about having other people who you admire play the song that you wrote. It is bizarre and it's it's addicting i just i'm having so much fun so i was i wasn't planning on having a band but here we are i have this amazing band and i'm like i want to bring you all with me <laughs> let's go <laughs> i can I, I just imagine uh, your husband in the background just like 
waiting, like <laughs> tapping his fingers on the desk, like, let's hope this works. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of my last hurrah, I see it as, <laughs> like, truly. To I, make it on a big level. Like, to, oh, I see, to make it on a big level. Yeah. I, uh, so that's, that's your ultimate goal, then? That's yes, what you want? international. Yeah. I had, speaking of dreams, I had a dream, very, very vivid, that I was in Italy, getting my hair and makeup did, or getting ready in my trailer for my next show, and my son was about nine years old, and he was over off in the corner getting tutored. That was it. That was the dream. It, but it was so real. It was like glimpsing into the future. So I'm like, I'm going to play in Italy someday. <laughs> See, that's that's amazing. Uh, it, it, it's amazing for a whole spectrum of reasons, but like, when it comes to vivid dreams like that, I, like, I do the same exact thing. <laughs> and like, I always explain it to Seth, uh, my son, you know, like, uh, I, I feel like I'm looking into a different dimension of my of myself, you know, like yeah. in no way, shape, or form can what hap- happened in this dream actually happen in my life, but maybe it's happening somewhere else, and I just I just caught a glimpse of that. Quantum physics. Yeah. Yeah. Science, man. <laughs> Science. Uh, it, th- that stuff is so interesting to me. I uh, yes. it, it's it's almost makes your brain twitch to try to think about it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't think I have enough room in my head to actually dive into quantum physics and the science behind it but i just know my experiences with it and like i can justify you know uh my dreams sometimes that are so real to be real like okay that was real maybe not in this world but it was real in a different world you know and yeah. i then i got a little glimpse of it totally you know and it's uh, it's either that or it's the opposite. We're like it's Matrix, and we're all just in a bubble, and our brains don't. <laughs> Sometimes they just blip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Looks like Unit Forty Two had another incident. You know, yeah, let's let's get that course corrected. You need to neutralize that. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Make that a dream. Yeah. That, okay. There that was a dream. That worked. <laughs> that's a. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, that seems like a scary way to look at life. <laughs> Like the Matrix thing, like yeah. I can't get behind it. But then yeah. again, I can't not prove it wrong either, you know. So I'm just stuck yeah. here, just in my okay. Well, this is the this this is the thought that makes me happy. I'm going to hold with that. Exactly. You know, that's um, what life is about. Really. Right. Yeah. I, at least, at least that's what I'm learning. So, <laughs> have you ever had like dreams so impactful, like you've written songs from them? Um, actually, I wrote an entire novel oh. of one dream. Well, there you so, go. Yeah, that's sitting in my back pocket, and I'm waiting. I need to just send it to some agents. I'm just being lazy about it at this point. But yeah, it's a paranormal murder mystery. It's called the Thirteenth Symbol. <laughs> and I think I remember you telling me about this I before. I probably told you about it like five years ago because yeah. it's forever in the making. But yeah, I had like a movie length dream with twists and characters and plots and stuff. And I yeah, that's crazy. That uh, uh, was that uh, was that something you sent me. Yeah, I probably sent you one of the early versions to try to like edit or see if you liked it or. Yeah, because you sent it to me and like I started reading it, but then like I put it back in the email. Like oh, I'll read the rest of it later, and then I just never got back to it. Sorry that's about okay. that. No worries. That, <laughs> that version was probably terrible. <laughs> it's gotten much better. <laughs> uh, that's I, I asked you that because I've written songs about my dreams you mm-hmm. know and actually i had I'll, I'll try not to keep this lengthy but uh i had a dream that that was so real and then what happened in the dream was starting to play out in life no way and but i ignored the point of the dream and it it just didn't work out and like i ended up writing a song about the whole ordeal but wow. like yeah it's my song i, I think it's the one that i played for your Valentine's thing, was it you? Is that the one I played? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that was that song. Nice. Um, I'm going to go back and listen to it. Yeah, the the dream was so insane. It was when I first started diving into that uh, dreams are a multidimensional thing. Mm-hmm. And that's because, as I said, I'm going to try not to tell the whole lengthy story, but um, me and this love of my life this girl that i always dream about doesn't have a face but like in my in my dream she's always the one oh. you know and uh-huh. it's always the same person but i just still can't see her or recognize her or or anything in the in the dream i do but when i wake up i can never remember what she looks like okay. and so, so, poetic. <laughs> so we were together and and then uh, we noticed that our car was broken too you know see uh, glass shattered on, on on the ground and and 
she picks up this mirror, you know, uh, that, that this handheld mirror that like it must have been like in the car, it got strung out from when they were breaking, pulling stuff out of the car, mm-hmm. and she kind of like fell into the mirror, and then the mirror fell on the ground and shattered into pieces. <gasps> Weird. And so I jumped into one of the shards of the mirror, trying uh-huh. to find her, uh-huh. and I ended up going into different realms of like different again dimensions of life where I would find a version of her but it wasn't her and then there's this one part that we could meet up at and we could only meet up for like just a, less than a minute and like we'd, it'd be just like a movie like we just appear out of nowhere and like boom here we are yeah. and she grabbed my hand and said Steve find one of the variants of me and just stick with that because we, we're never going to be together in this lifetime Aww. we'll be together but not yet yeah you know and and like that was i'll just end the the story there and that's that's how it ended but i spent so long like going down different shards of glass trying to find find her only to be told that i can't find her you know or that i'll never be able to be with her in this particular world and then something in my life started happening and it kind of mirrored that dream in a sense because well I'm going to sound like a madman. But the girl, I only met her once at a show, and then she came to me, and or um, and then I had a dream about her that night, and she came to me and says, I'm the one. I'm the one you were looking for. And it was very, I, I actually dismissed it. Like, I was like, oh, what a weird dream, you know? Yeah. And then somewhere along the line, we, we started talking, and she, she kind of paralleled with a lot of the dreams that I had. Previously, huh. other dreams about this, you know, un, unfaced things. girl or unfaced. That sounds morbid. <laughs> Your mystery girl. It sounds a lot more pleasant. Um, and you know, the, uh, one one of my dreams specifically, she's like, "You just described my life in 2016." I said, "Well, the girl in the dream had blonde hair." She goes, "I was blonde in 2016." And what? like, yeah, and it, it, it was it was crazy. And, and like, then you know, yeah. Uh, you know, things might like endorphins in my head start firing, you know, starting sure. getting that, you know, yeah. like, oh my God, this is it, you know, yeah. but, I, but I was failing to pay attention to the important part of that one dream. It's not going to happen. You know, what happened to her? Is she okay? <laughs> <laughs> Did she fall into her I don't want to talk about it. No, uh, Did no, she no, it, it didn't work out. Um, it, 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 it was a very sudden break. Like we were, like we were together one day and then the next day we weren't. And oh. it was, uh, there was I can't. There's no real anything that happened. She just basically told me there's somebody else who deserves this space. You know, I, I mean, yeah, I know it sounds Man. sounds a little shitty, but yeah, yeah. I'm not. I, I don't know what that story is. You know, yeah. she, but she made the right decision for her, and, and that's when I realized, okay, well, maybe I should have paid paid attention to the dream. You know, so anyway. Well, what can you do though? You can't not explore that, like. Yeah. You can't be like I had a dream, so I'm right. Call you back. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, but then again, also, how much of a dream is you know weird, just random dream shit, you know? Right. So, yeah, but I, I've I haven't had a dream about her since. Interesting. Not once, and uh, yeah, so the song "You" was written out of that. I'm going to go listen to that again <laughs> with that context in mind. Now that's fascinating. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's a good song. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't say that very often about my own music, but like it, I do like that one. <laughs> we have a couple of those that I'm like, damn, that's, that's good. Or I'll write it and I'll be like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> that's good lyrics. Um, so you're happy with your band the way it is now? Like you're happy with the members and yeah. all that stuff? I mean, are they on the same goal that you are? I, I think so. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know my drummer for sure is like. Hundred percent in, no matter what. I think my bassist is too. Um, we just got a new guitarist. He's a uh, part owner of the Bossy Girls. Oh, team, okay. So that was pretty cool. I was wondering why you were doing a lot of Bossies. So yeah. like I was yeah. wondering how that connection got made. It was funny because um, he asked us if we needed. He's like, I heard you need a guitarist, and we're like, Yeah. And he's like, Well, I'd like to try. He's like, I don't know. I was like, I'll just try. And then like three people came up to us and was like, Did 
did Mike just ask if he could be your guitarist? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, he's amazing. I'm like, okay, <laughs> no audition needed. You're in. <laughs> he's just like real chill, but he's amazing. Like, and we have uh, Cliff Marsh for saxophone, which I, he's pretty well known in Columbus, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I just did a podcast with the manager of his other band, Blue Spectrum. Yes. And Zane will actually be here on Wednesday. Nice. So. Also phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's in. He's just like whatever, whatever you want to do. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen Cliff live a couple of times. He's he seems like a really cool guy. I've never actually sat down and talked to him. Very. You cool. know, but from what I can gather, he's got a very calm, and collected way of thinking. He stuck in my head uh, the very first gig I had with the liquor talking. Um, Paul just like text Cliff rand- randomly like, "Hey, we're having a show. You want to come out? Sure." And he came out and he's like, "All right, what key are we in?" I'm like, "Oh, we're in C or whatever." And and he would just like, blah, 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 blah. I was like, "What the? F- <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy?" <laughs> like, he just came out of nowhere, no rehearsals, amazing. <laughs> So yeah, I was like number back pocket. <laughs> Musicians like that freak me out because <laughs> you know, like I'm I'm about as raw as it gets. You know, I don't know music theory. I, I I've had Brandon Crawford as a dueling piano player. Mm-hmm. You know, he's had me play gigs with him like for the full band. And I'm like, dude, I don't do that. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude, just fake it. Come on. And I'm like, I don't know what that. At least means. you have a capo. You can. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like... Um, and. And, you know, I went out there and he's yelling, you know, B7 flat. I'm like, I don't know what that is. You know, like, I don't know what that is. You know, yeah. just just play it and I'll follow you, you know. And I can't believe I'm going to tell this, but <laughs> he looked at me and he goes, dude, if you're having trouble, just turn the guitar off and pretend like you're playing. <laughs> I did it for a couple songs. All I'm right. not going to lie. I did it. And like, I, I will never do that again. I will never like, I, I shouldn't have done it then. It was good experience. At least now I know. But musicians that can speak speak that language yeah. just it, it amazes me scott my co-writer is actually teaching me all that like he's giving me piano lessons and teaching me the theory and because i was like i don't want to be the dumb singer like i don't want to be just the the pretty face in front of bands like i want to know what you guys are talking about yeah I, it's complex i hear going uh, through the piano is a is the easiest way to learn music theory because it's all laid out right in front of you so you can see it yeah and I, yeah. crawford again was trying to give me a little little teachings of that because i used to have a keyboard in here a really nice one too but i sold it uh because i just didn't play the damn thing um but yeah he, he he's like dude I'll, I'll teach you i'll do all this stuff and i'm over here i'm like i got film trigger in my head i got studio 47 presents in my head i got uh, you know i i got full-time music at the time you know i'm like i don't know if i have room yeah that's how i feel no, it's not the time i might yeah. be using that as an excuse for a lot of shit but like i just feel like i don't have more room in here for the things I have, I have to compartmentalize yeah. this stuff and keep it where it is, you know? That's been one thing I've really learned about this is how to say no to people, which is, it sounds so fundamental and, like, like that's what all the stupid memes are about. Like, learn to say no. Make time in your life. But really, it's important and it's hard to do, <laughs> especially for a woman, I think. We're just, like, expected to do everything. And I don't know. It's been, it's been very um, freeing for me to just be like no i can't do that right now sorry maybe next time yeah saying no it, it can be very liberating for yeah. sure like i was telling you before we got got on here like i've been saying no to gigs lately yeah. you know like i've had to say no like no i'm, I'm at limit right now you know like why well, are you booked on uh, this friday i'm like mm, i'll leave friday's open for film triggers so no yeah exactly you know? there's time for the rest of your life to happen it's not all yeah. about making other people happy yeah and I think COVID, this is what I've derived from COVID happening, you know, uh, much like you said, you started going crazy when, when COVID hit, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. I had the same reaction when RZA didn't work out for you, how you backed off and like had that, had reassessed yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I had that when COVID hit, you know, and I had to like back off, you know, and okay, let me just readjust, reevaluate what's important. Now I'm working, you know, if regular nine to five, which I haven't done in for any ever. I've never worked a nine to five ever. You know, I was always working random, you know, late shifts or whatever, but I don't know. I I guess that job really helped me plan around it. You know, I, that's, that's what helped me organize and balance life a little bit more. Yeah. You know, and yeah, it's, it's strange because I ran from 
I, I wanted to be, do my own thing, be my own. And then, and when, you did for a while. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, and I'm and I'm and I'm proud of that. I'm yeah. proud of that. I I can take that and put that on a shelf and be like, okay, I did that. I did. Not many people say <laughs> can say that they did, you know, and and that's that's. I learned that concept from my very first podcast I did with um, a photographer called Jeremy D. Moore. He owns Zombie uh, on ZTP Magazine in Columbus, and he that's what he told me. He's like. He's like, you know, if, Z, if ZTP Mag fails, that's fine. He's like, that's okay. It can fail. It's something that I did. Mm. Here it is. Here's what I did. I can I can show that off. I like that. Yeah, and that, that kind of readjusted the way like I looked at my situation. Yeah. You know, but so <laughs> moving forward. Sorry. I, I, no, I, f- I just have so many things that I could say. Like, like what? I did that. I did this and that. Right. And yeah. That. That's something I, I recognize. <laughs> It's one of our parallels that we have, right. these mini adventures. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, I did a full series of paintings called Sassy Hippos. Did you ever see those? No. <laughs> Can I find them? Yes. Where, where, uh, like... uh, Artpal.com slash Sassy Hippo. Art, I think uh, there's no S on the end. Com slash Sassy Hippo. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, oh, for those that can't see this, it's legit. <laughs> oh, you're going to pull it up on the big screen. <laughs> it looks like we're blurred out because we have boobies. I, <laughs> I painted a series of cartoon hippos in the form of 50s pinup girls. <laughs> this is insane. It's insane because I'm looking at a cartoon painting. Like, it looks like a, just like of a cartoon hippo. Yeah. And some of them are blurred out for content. Well, yeah, cl- click on it. Click on the Christmas one, yeah. That one? Yeah, that's probably my favorite. Oh, how do you I don't know. Show? Uh, where's... Show oh, right here. Here it is. Okay. Yeah, there she is. What? That's not bad. That's not even that bad. This says ho, ho, ho. <laughs> she got a little side boob going. <laughs> <laughs> But isn't it cute? Like, I'm so proud of these. Can, uh, I have so, not so, sold a single fucking <laughs> painting. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in the description of this video. Yes. So if anybody's <laughs> listening to this, they can at least go check this out. And for God's sakes, this would make a great random ass present for right? somebody. It's amazing. And my original intent was to make a calendar, but it w- I couldn't find anywhere that like put calendars together like that. That wouldn't I wouldn't have to like pay for first. Wow. Isn't that great? I love the spring one. I love them all. And then there's a COVID one up in the the uh, special ones. Right up here? Yeah. Which my, one is it? That now? one, yeah. That one. She's my nurse. <laughs> why, why, why hippos? Oh, um, so hippos uh, represent, like in the animal totems, they, re- they represent um, being comfortable with yourself as you are, but also having the power to become whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> it's a very empowering animal. See, I, I love, I lo- one of the m- many aspects I really appreciate about you <laughs> is you don't just do things for the flash of it, you know, like, oh, that sounds like a good, you know, clickbaity name or, you know, like, we do hippos because hippos are funny looking. Like, yeah. you actually have meaningful reasons. <laughs> Of why you know, of that. why thing you do the things you do and like the 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 story you know behind you know the name you know Ember Solis you know like you have this huge you know deep it means something to you yeah you know and hopefully it can mean something to others you know I mean if I wouldn't have known this like <laughs> this is I, I don't even, I'm I, I don't <laughs> even know what to say this is crazy yeah I'm gonna definitely put this in the link in the description go check these out you see that Please. alien that says looking for love on all the wrong planets. <laughs> that what? could be yours. I'll Which one? Right next to, yeah. This one? Yeah. Looking for love on all the wrong planets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Sign me up. That was. A- I can get it on a mug. <laughs> I, I can get it on canvas, frame, uh, frame prints, uh, fine art prints. You can, Stevie, uh. because you know me, you can also buy the original. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. How big is this thing? Oh, they're... Oh, there's little itty-bitty ones? Like nine by Well, well in that case, it, I'd have to do a hippo series, like on the wall, like somewhere yes. in the studio. <laughs> a little, little three-part. Yeah. I will, I'll definitely get one of those side boob ones. And the bitch, please, with the <laughs> unicorns. I thought, I just thought that was funny. 
Wow. See, yeah, I appreciate this sort of thing. <laughs> I do. It, I, this is like, like if uh, anybody goes into like any of my defunct uh, web pages or uh, YouTube channels, you know, like Cade Pro Films, where I didn't my know son. About that one. What's that? Oh yes, I did with the Legos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, like my, we'll still watch these. They're so <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> But, like, there's such passion behind it. Yes. You know, like, we spent literal three months on one video. I would imagine, because it's, like, the stop, what is it? Well, stop we didn't animation? do the stop uh, the stop uh, animation, stop motion thing. Yeah, um, stop motion. We, uh, what we would do is we'd set up an entire scene uh, with Legos, which I still have one of the last shoots, like, in my son's bedroom. Like, we Aww. still have that scene set up. Um, we would do an entire scene, and, like, we'd actually direct the camera like in a very like mature manner like for what the fuck we're doing you know <laughs> and i say we tentatively because my son just sat there and watched me obsess over it sure. you know <laughs> um but like i would do like really artful like camera pans and like you know take a look at the whole structure then come in and like you know we'd have characters over in one area then the main character here and like let this character talk and then pan over and What's nice. what's what is what stories or what are, what's their dialogue you know and then we slightly change something else you know put his hand up to his head and go a different angle like that's how we did it wasn't really stop animation or stop motion but it, it's funny the evolution of how that got to where it ended was amazing because it was it's what got me into editing oh cool. yeah because our very first one that we did I didn't know how to edit and I didn't have an editing program we were literally pressing pause on the record button setting everything up and pre pressing record wow. and if we screwed up like a few takes down the road we had to start all over again oh my god and there's there's some our last one that we did like that was so crazily perfect like because we were having we had music playing in the background but again no editing software yeah. my son's playing music on his phone <laughs> and we had to hit pause at the same time and hit record at the same time and like it wow. just seemed seamless. The music just like continued. Now you'll see, notice some like volume vari uh, variations and you know sure. things like that. But just yeah, and that's so fun. Fucking, that's so special that you guys have that. Yeah, it, it's it is, it, and we just sit back and laugh. And <laughs> I was doing a live stream with some guys talking about the new show Loki on Disney Plus, and the little after the live stream chat, you know, these guys are talking about, well, you know, if I hope I make it big or, you know, I don't care if I make it big, I just enjoy doing it. And I said something to them and I thought it would be like a universal thought, but apparently it wasn't. Um, I was like, well, you know, the way I look at it is when I'm gone, I'm leaving this library behind for my son and his grandkids, you know, mm -hmm. like it's something that like I can't do with, you know, besides our version would be like looking at old photographs of, our family, you know, but mm -hmm. I've stored this digital library of memories, you know, and like, I guess, I guess that's what Studio 47 presents is kind of thing. This is my library of me trying to learn about other people and myself, you know, through discussion. But It's a great legacy. Yeah, well, they, 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 they were shocked. They're like, I've never looked at it that way. You know, I was like, you know, I have kids, you know, you, you make a good point. I'm like, oh, well, shit. Yeah, okay, cool. You're welcome. <laughs> I, my uh, great grandfather was an artist and my grandmother was an artist, like both painted. So I have these like beautiful paintings from them, but God, like how cool would it be to have our phones like back then, you yeah. know, to see, we're just so used to it because we have it all the time, but to have a video of, or my other great grandfather played ragtime on piano, like. How cool would that be to have a video of him doing that? That'd be sweet. Yeah, or like behind the like if they had YouTube back then, you know, yeah. like that 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 document of how you know you get from one place to the next, you know, yeah. how you get from A to D, you know, and you, you get to see the B and C of it, um, and that's the stuff that we're gonna leave behind. You're gonna leave behind, you know, and it it, it, it's, it can sound morbid to think about, but that's not how I look at it, you know, like yeah, you know, you know, one day you're grandkids great grandkids or like well did you know that your great grandmother used to be in and had multiple projects and here's <laughs> proof you know like and here's here's what she did you know like got a thing called Rizza kids <laughs> yeah and the next thing you know you know Rizza kids will like rebirth you know from your great granddaughter you know oh uh, that'd be cool <laughs> 80 years from now you know like <laughs> it would help her from the beyond for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah see that's that's the power of what we do you know mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's cool and that's the power of art you know, I think it's almost cliche, like, you know, 
all the, like, oh, that's 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 art, but that's what it is. I mean, art is such a broad thing. You know, it yeah. can be anything. You know, like a like me doing construction at work, I look at it like art. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's yeah, it's it's a it's a powerful thing, and I'm glad that. I'm glad I got into it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I get to meet people like you, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really know what to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to That's think. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I, I just don't want to beat it into, into the ground too much. So. Yeah. I was a personal trainer a long time ago. Are we on like a time limit or something? I don't want to like. No. Oh, okay. Um, I was a personal trainer in my past life. And I had a client who was kind of like, um, prophetic, prophetic. She, she was Christian, so she didn't like the word psychic, but she's basically a psychic. (laughs) Gotcha. Um, and I remember her, this is when I was a personal trainer. I had no, I was like, I play guitar sometimes and I sing at coffee shops. And she's like, I see you. She, is, she was from Africa. She had the most beautiful accent. She's like, I see you on stage. You are singing in front of thousands of people and you are healing them with your voice. And I was like, what? It's <laughs> crazy. I was like, I have no idea what you are talking about because that's nuts. But now... Yeah, you went from physical <laughs> therapy to spiritual therapy. Yes. It's crazy. And I do keep that in mind when I write my lyrics. And I make sure to... I have my journal that I bring with me everywhere. And I'll just like... I'll just sense it's time to bring out the notebook and I'm like what am I going to write about I don't know just bring it out and we'll open it to the blank page and I'll just sit there and stare at it for a little bit and kind of do some work and come back to it and then like a phrase will pop into my head and I'll write that down I'm like oh that's cool and then I just kind of like build the song around that and it just within an hour I have a full song written and it's just I feel like I am channeling it is the craziest thing because I'm like where did that come from it's not like I sat around thinking about it for days and it's cool. And sometimes I'll go back and read those, and I'll be like, I wrote that? <laughs> I can't remember writing that. Yeah, I, I still have all of my journals. Like, they're... Nice. Uh, I, yeah, I guess. Um, it's going to be... That's what my family's going to say when they're sifting through my crap after mm-hmm. I go, and, like, they're finding random notebooks stuffed, like, in random places. Like, wow. And, like, the 15th page of this notebook is that one song, <laughs> you know, and it's the sixth page of that other notebook is that other song, you know, because like, I... I can't focus to keep my songs in one book. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I'm writing a song here. And also my grocery list. And also <laughs> let, me do, let me do budgeting. You know, like, yeah, it just gets lost in the shuffle. But do you find songwriting, like, uh, to be, do you find that process to be easy? Or? Uh, I, um, when it's time. If I try to force it, if I'm like, I'm going to sit and write a song right now, then it sucks. And it's really hard. And I'll be like four hours into it. And I'm like, I can't do this. Like, this is crap. (laughs) Like, if I, yeah, so, but when I'm, like, ready, when I get the download, (laughs) talking about downloads earlier, then I can just push it right out there. I am. Yeah, I guess, yeah, when you're ready, it's it's easiest. I always find songwriting to be difficult. Like, it's, it's more of almost a chore for me sometimes. Hmm. Um, and it just has to happen organically. I cannot sit down and write something. I, like I, I might have like a what you call a download, but mm-hmm. I don't recognize it as that. And I'll, you know, for me, I just very rarely will I sit there and look at my guitar and go, "Yeah, let me just pick that up." Yeah. And then I'm like, "Oh, that sounds kind of neat." And then my lyrics kind of start writing themselves. Mm-hmm. Like I'll just start saying something, and then like it. It fits, and then like I don't know what I'm gonna say next, and then it just kind of comes out. And I'm just kind of writing as it's coming out of me, mm-hmm. you know. Like it's mm-hmm. a very odd thing, and like I, m- most of the time I have to sit there and like, oh, I see what I mean, you know, like because <laughs> uh, I didn't know, I, I'm not sure what I'm saying exactly. I just know like that that that's what flows and whatever. There's something going on in my head, like going, okay, we gotta force this out, buddy. Yeah, it's, it's ready. Time, it's time for therapy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, um, I, I think the only. There's only two songs that I can think of that I didn't do that with, and that was you. I had a very specific 
thing in mind with mm-hmm. you, you yeah. know. And well, that's the other thing. I think it's easy if you can be like, I need you to write a song about this, and I can be like, okay, and sit down and probably do it pretty well. But if I if I assign the task to myself, I can't do it. Like the other thing, that's I'm, a good idea or a good thought. The other thing I'm really good at is. Um, writing other people's stories and this was one of my posts one of my rambling posts um like if there's somebody that i'm like their human experience is so amazing and unique and it deserves a song and then i can sit and write a song about that and it's pretty pretty easy because their life is already so poetic it's just a matter of putting it into song form i never tried doing that oh it's fun it's but you should ask permission first. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it comes across very stalkery. Yeah, yeah. I wrote a song for um, a friend's wedding about the two of them. It's called "The Window." It's on my like old Green Eyes, my first album as Anne Marie. I remember. I remember that album. What's that? I, I remember that album. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, you were there. Um, and yeah, the window. So it's very like when I was done with it she was like how did you do this it's like perfect I'm like I don't know it's just I don't know I don't it's the download I don't <laughs> sometimes I take stabs and they work like and they're perfect and I don't know did we talk about download when the mics were on I don't know because I feel like we should clarify what that is yeah to anybody listening so when I get a download I get kind of like spacey feeling like a little bit like like secondhand smoking feeling, <laughs> like a little loopy. And then it could be minutes, it could be hours, it could be a day. I'll just all of a sudden get, boom, like information drop in my head. And I'm like, I got to get it out, and I get it on paper. And does that only go with like your your own internal thing? Or because you had a, a download oh. feeling on your way here, mm-hmm. and then you got some news, which we won't go into it right now. Yeah. Yeah, because... It's not hashed out, but yeah. um, unless you want to, but I. Uh, but then you got some some news that was very exciting. Yeah. As soon, like w- as soon as you got here. Yeah. You know, and you're like, that was the download. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So like, obviously, it doesn't just g- come from it, and it, it's it's the world. Yeah. The world, web, not the, the internet, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a really big believer in like law of attraction. I don't know if you get into that at all. Uh, break it down for me, real quick. What's break it down. Um. Basically, like, everything is energy, and our thoughts are things, and we are constantly creating our own reality. And like attracts like. So whatever you're thinking about is what's going to come to you, kind yeah. of thing. And your emotions are the basis of, they're like your internal compass. So basically, like, your inner self, your, your perfect soul being, however you want to think of it, your God part, is north. And it's always thinking pure positive love. Everything is great. Everything is fine. And then if you start to think thoughts that are off that, like, ugh, I'm ugly or whatever, <laughs> then you feel bad. Yeah. Because your inner being doesn't feel that way. So you're off course. So you have to uh, crank it back in and get your thoughts back in line with your inner self. And that's when all the magic happens. And the other side to that is... Every time you experience something that you don't want, your inner being goes, oh, that's what we don't want. What do we want? We want this. And then you create that in your alternate universe. That's like kind of what I was like, should I bring this up? So your other, it's like waiting for you. It's created. You are the creator. It's already there waiting for you. You just have to line up with it. So the more you can line up with your inner being, the more you can like get those coincidences and ideas and all the things that feel like magic when they happen they just start to happen more and more and more and that's leading you they call it the vortex to your vortex that's all the good things I, I think i do believe in some of that in my own like i i that have, i think i've had that way of thinking i just never had a thing to attach it to it like it's just something that I've just figured out my way of working. Like, kind of like when I was telling you about the podcast, how I used to edit them. I used mm-hmm. to edit my stupid out, and then I became comfortable with my stupid. Like, <laughs> you know, if it sounds dumb, then subscribe or don't subscribe. I don't care. Right. You know, like, <laughs> um, I think that, that kind of goes with what you were saying. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful way to look 
and evolve yourself to grow. Mm -hmm. I also attribute that to afterlife in my, in my head. I, um, I listened to this one medium, um, and I'm not really into mediums. Like my, like my, they, they run rampant in my family, you know, but like, I, f I figure like most people that are trying to say they're psychic or a medium, like I feel like 80% are full of shit, yeah. you know? And so I'm very critical about that, but there's this one woman that I trust and it, I trust her because of the way she carries herself, the way she's reluctant to talk about things. Mm. You know, um, she's not trying to prove a point. She's not out trying to make money doing this stuff. She's just, she just does it and she won't answer certain questions cause it's none of it's like, oh, it's really none of your business, you know, like mm. somebody asked her once about, are you religious? You know, since you can see the other side and communicate with the dead, what's, what's over there? You know, and she goes, well, my religious views don't matter. She goes, do I believe in a religion? Yes. But does it matter? No. Mm. And she goes on to say that you create your own heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, she, she says, there's a reason why when I go into a house and it's like severely haunted, you know, when, when I give advice to somebody, I ask them, uh, do you have a belief? And if they say yes, what belief is it? Oh, it's this belief, that belief, or the other belief. Okay. Well, if that's your belief, then get the higher power of that belief, your priest or your rabbi, have them come in, mm -hmm. you know, and clean the house mm -hmm. because it's, it's not the religion itself. It's the confidence that that person the confidence that person holds yes. to get rid of the spirits, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I've taken multiple things from this lady and just like applied them in my life, you know, especially when it comes to the spiritual world. Another whole thing I'm not going to go down today because um, that's a that's a rabbit hole, but I've had my own experiences with stuff like that and I've had to learn to have the confidence to push it out myself. I don't need somebody else to push that stuff out. You know, I can sure. get yeah. rid of it. Good. But the biggest takeaway was you you create your own heaven and hell you know if somebody's a good person they uh if they happen to believe in christianity or whatnot and they they lead a good life and have a well-balanced life then their afterlife will play as what they thought it would mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that that can go both ways yeah so you create your own thing and i think that kind of goes with what you were saying yeah you know, just yours is more like do it now. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess in a sense, it's all do it now, you know, if we're, you know, a, a righteous payoff in the end, but yeah, that's God, that stuff so deep. I know. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so, so there's the, there's I, sound like, a, I feel like a madman when I t talk about that. No, stuff not at all. I but, totally, I'm like right there with you. Cool. So. All right. Yeah, you're, you're good company. All right. I'm drinking the tea. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a woman, Esther Hicks, who channels a group of spirits that call themselves Abraham and together they're Abraham Hicks and there's a whole slew of books and videos and she just she just channels and taps in and that's who I learned all this from like I've, I kind of knew about some of it before but this was like what solidified it for me Abraham Hicks and um, <clears throat> it changed my life so much that my friend and I decided to go to Chicago to see her and I got to sit in the hot seat which was awesome. Which the hot seat. That's, the hot seat. That's like you, you're being focused on? Yeah. So okay. you, there's like a whole crowd of people. Like it's a big hotel conference room. And I got to sit right in front of the stage and look at her and ask her a question. That was amazing. Them. What would you ask? Them. Oh, God. I don't even remember. I can send you the video of it. It's oh, funny. there's a video of it? The, well, there's like a, the sound clip from it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Is that I, published? Yeah. It's funny because I'm all like, hee hee hee. <laughs> all right. I'm, so I'm going to need you to do like, me a favor and actually just send me these all these links that you want okay. to send. Okay, because... I, I will. I can do that. But yeah, I basically was like, um, basically what I wanted to know was, is it true that you can bring shit from your past life into this one and you can't get rid of it because it's past life? And they were like, no. Like when you croak, clean slate, that's it. And then you come back and you get a whole this like so anything that you're dealing with now is from this life and you can take care of it now. Yeah, yeah, no scapegoating this one, buddy. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, that that's a unique thing. Uh, do you so you, you're a firm believer in uh, past lives and? Oh yes, yes. So I, I don't know if I am. I don't know. Like I'm not against it. Uh huh. But I, I just don't. It's one of those things. Like yeah, it sounds like a cool idea. 
but like, where's there's nothing that's giving me validity towards it one way or another. I guess there, there's TV series of those kids are like, oh, I remember dying on a plane. Like, right? okay, Johnny, yeah. you're four. You know, <laughs> yeah. and like that like, plane did here's exist. Where the body is, right? Why did you know? Yeah. Right, there's, there is those, that weird shit that happens, yeah. you know, that, that's, what, that's what keeps me like, hmm, maybe mm-hmm. there is something to this, but then, you know, a commercial comes on and I make a sandwich or something, totally forget about it. <laughs> but, <Damn> it. <laughs> uh, so like, if you don't mind, uh, a little deeper into that, like, like, um, is there a way to connect with your past life that you know of? Like, how, like, how, how would you, if, like, if I wanted to dive into my past life, if yeah. I, you know, I'm you know, uh, healthily, healthily, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A skeptic, but like, I'm interested. So like, what would I need to do to dive into that sort of state? Well, you could always see your friendly local medium. They're usually a good resource. Um, I did a meditation once and it was like specifically for past life regression. There are, um, hip, hypnotists that do that as well they can put you under um i'm i'm definitely not an expert at this just a disclaimer (laughs) i'm not an expert um but i did a meditation once and i saw um that i was a i was it was the civil war and i was like a wife and um my husband went off and died in the war and left me with two children at home and that's i mean I forget why I was doing that, but it was, it wasn't like, it wasn't even like a dream. It was like, I was watching a movie, like, and I knew that that was me. It was weird. See, when it comes to things like that, like my own brain, I always question, okay, how much of that am I fabricating? Sure. You know, I've... And I could have made it up. Right. <laughs> right. But it felt real. Yeah, you know, and uh, but that can also go into play with the, uh, you know, with the dreams that I have, and I've related them to my life. You know, how much are those fabricated? But yeah. I'm one of those like evidence people. At the same time, like I always, I'm a very curious person, but I always like, I need, I need something grounded to hold on to, so I can just like, go into so it. So a lot of that's very human of you, and a lot of what Abraham talks about is like you got to kind of drop that a little bit because the manifestation comes after the belief, like the belief comes first and then the manifestation comes. So like you have to expect it, that it's coming. And yeah. And it a, can kind of come to you. So it kind of goes back into the whole faith realm of things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But it's faith in yourself that good things are coming and you can do it. I'll give you, I'll give you a task to do Okay. over the next few days. Um, so, I've been noticing lately that there's not many butterflies around. Have you noticed that? I feel like when we were kids, there was butterflies everywhere. There was just butterflies. I haven't noticed it. Because you haven't seen them. Because right. I feel like every time you see a butterfly, you're like, oh, butterfly. Right? Like right. some part of you. I have noticed thing. this white moth that's been <laughs> out front for like three days. But... All right. Well, you got one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a moth. A butter. It's not even a butterfly. Is it? I, I don't know. I, don't, I, think they're, I, think, I think a butterfly Cousins. is more a moth than the other way around. Cousins. Like the redneck cousins of butterflies. I don't know. <laughs> we only go out at night. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, That's okay. Uh, so butterflies. So butterflies. Uh, you have you've noticed that like, butterflies aren't. There's not as many butterflies. Yeah. I think like uh, as a kid, you, I feel like I saw a ton of butterflies, and now I just don't see many. So, what I want you to do now is think about butterflies, like. There's what blue ones that I've seen around with black lining, and there's the monarchs with the orange usually, and there's I think there's like a yellow breed that goes around here sometimes. So what we've done now is we've talked about butterflies for at least 17 seconds, which is the tipping point, according to Abraham, for law of attraction to get like kicked into gear. So now. Because you feel no, like, true emotional attachment to butterflies or you don't feel one way or the other about them, right? It's butterflies. It's not like you're like, ah, butterflies, I hate butterflies. (laughs) Like, you have no beliefs. (laughs) It's just butterflies. (laughs) If you notice in the next, I don't know, couple days or however, you should start seeing more butterflies now because we've talked about them. It's almost like when you get a car and you start seeing that car everywhere. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I, uh, 
I have a thing for fireflies. I love fireflies. Yeah, I, I love fireflies. I have a line in one of my songs about fireflies. What's that? I have a line in one of my songs about fireflies. Yeah, they're... Well, mine started off destructive. <laughs> you smeared them? <laughs> well, when I, I mean, yeah, when I was a boy, you know, mm-hmm. I was jumping in mud puddles and smearing bugs, you know, and, you know, magnifying ants, you mm-hmm. know, that, that, that whole thing. But one time, oh, I was 14 or something like that, I, I had a, a firefly and, and I crushed it. And my brother had just passed away, like, about oh. a year before. And my mom looked at me and she goes, "How do you know that wasn't your brother?" Oh, yeah, was, yeah. Well, she wasn't in the. She was still like, you know, mourning. You know, so like, yeah. it was just she was like definitely just like focusing on that. Like, I'm sure now if I told her that story, she'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry yeah. I ever said that." You Aww. know, she, she wasn't in her right for sure. You know, way of thinking at that time, and that it broke my heart. And now ever since then, you're like save all the fireflies. Yeah, you know, and like it, it's. Part of like why like I went the vegetarian route and stuff like that. Like I just started thinking like, oh, you might be Uncle Joe. I don't know, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> it, it, yeah. But the big get back to your point is I probably will start noticing butterflies, you know, because we brought it up. So that's mm-hmm. that law of attraction that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. There's one story that I remember specifically. I was sitting on a porch with a friend, and she was telling me about these. Those, I guess they're butterflies, the little white ones. Mm-hmm. That, you know what I'm talking about? They're they're, they're just tiny. They're yeah. little white ones that yeah. usually go in groups. You know, yeah. um, and she's like, every time I see one of those, I know my mom's around. She goes, every time I talk about my mom, they come around. Mm-hmm. T- two seconds later, they're, they're just like three or four of them go right in front of us. She goes, that's what I'm talking about. She oh. goes, every time I bring up my mother, these little white butterflies show up. Mm-hmm. So, that's sweet. so, all right. So um, let's say I start thinking about butterflies and now that we've had that conversation it's in my head and you know I start seeing butterflies how do I apply that to the other part of that discussion that that belief yeah so it's because it's a neutral subject you don't have any feelings about it at all it's really easy for the universe to deliver it to you but it's our beliefs one way or the other that kind of make it rocky like screw up our vibration about it so like if I'm like um, let me do something that's not going to mess me up too much. Uh, let's say I'm like, I really want a pogo stick. Like, God, I want a pogo stick, but I can't have a pogo stick because it's $60. I don't have $60. I'm never going to be able to get it. But I want a pogo stick. 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 But I don't have a pogo stick. And every time I think about wanting a pogo stick, I notice that I don't have a pogo stick. I'm standing in my own vibrational way about it because I'm like creating turbulence. I'm going upstream like about that vibration, particular vibration of the pogo stick. You're more focused on the fact that you don't have one. Exactly. So it's more, and that's that internal compass of emotions that matters, right? So if you can't think about something that you want and feel good, because that's how your inner being, your inner being, inner being is like, there's a million pogo sticks in the world. Of course you can have a pogo stick. I could get you one by tonight. Like, <laughs> there's going to be one in the alley. Like, <laughs> you never know how it's going to come, right? But as long as you're feeling bad, you're not in line. You're not vibrating in line with that reality. So you have to, like, get yourself lined up, and then it comes to you. If you can't think about it and feel good, you just have to get off the subject altogether, which works wonders for me. And it's not denial. It's just saying I care about how I feel and when I think about that I don't feel good so I'm going to choose to think about something that makes me feel good and raises your vibration I've had to do that recently I had a someone who I considered a very close friend essentially break up with me said we're not we can't be friends this isn't working and it killed me I mean it really hurt it did but now I'm to the point where I'm like yeah, it was probably for the best. But I would start to think about that and I would like feel shitty and then I would notice my music would start to suffer because I was focused on feeling shitty instead of what made me feel good, which was my music stuff and my family and all that stuff, like the good things. So whenever I would start to pivot that way, because there's nothing I can do about it, right? I can't change how people feel about me. That's not my business. I could only control how I feel and what I think about 
because I'd start to think about that that stupid bitch. I can't believe she. Nope, I care about how I feel, and I can't wait to get into band practice this weekend. <laughs> nope, I'm gonna come over here. My son is so beautiful, and I love him so much. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, I'm, I know you're making this sound like an, an internal struggle, but I can just see, like, your husband and son sitting at home, and you're like physically, and. <laughs> audibly doing this you know out loud <laughs> do you ever think about how crazy we would all sound if we like spoke our internal monologue out loud? oh yeah i mean that, that's that's, that's why nuts. that's why um uh that thing elon musk wants to create that uh Neuralink, it freaks me out do you know about Neuralink? no oh dear lord i'm terrified already well it, it's well as a physical therapist you appreciate it because the its initial integrity is to like uh you know like if you are paraplegic or something and you they can put this chip, you know, drill a hole in your brain, put a chip in there, and it will reconnect what needs to be reconnected so people can Whoa. physically, you know, do what they weren't able to do. Yeah. You know, depending on, you know, if the, you know, if the X factors are, can work that way. Sure. Um, but Elon also said, well, but that's the start. He goes, you know, he's talking like short term, like five, ten years. He's like, we can have this thing out running it's already being tested you know, on animals, which is that's a whole different thing. But uh, he said, "I this Neuralink has the potential to where we we wouldn't have to have conversations, you know, with our mouths anymore. We'd be able to." No. Right. Yeah. Because no, stay out. <laughs> that, right. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, you don't want to go. I don't want to know what you're thinking. No. You're like, and I was like, "Where's the edit button on this? Like, like there, you yeah. can't just be like." This is what I was going to say, you know, and now it's being communicated to you through technology. Would it be like Alexa? Be like, Alexa, tell that person to get the fuck out of my way. Beep. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, you, you have to be able to choose. Yeah, like how, how how can you edit that when you're when you're talking to somebody you know you're not really friends with, but you're just you know being you know courteous you know, in the conversation, and you're using Neuralink and you're just like, wow, that's really cool of you. I really appreciate you coming out, you sick son of a bitch. <laughs> you're like, oh shit. You're like, that last part wasn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's terrifying. Yeah. So like yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're, you should probably stay away from Neuralink. Yeah. I think I will. <laughs> I think I will. <laughs> I get a little vindictive sometimes. <laughs> uh, well, that's, I mean, that's what makes this way of thinking healthy. You know, and especially for people that, um, I would assume, you know, I could put us in the same category like you and I, where we have so many things going on in our head, you know, like we have to figure out how to be healthy about it. Right. You know, because what makes us that way? Because we get obsessive about things you know, mm-hmm. we can be possessive about things and like, we got to put ourselves in control of this stuff, you know, like, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Am I? Yeah. All 100%. Right, cool. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's it's definitely healthy to put yourself in check, and I don't think a lot of people know that. I don't think a lot of people understand that that's that they fall into that category. You don't have to be a creative. You could be, you know, anything. You could be working at a fast food restaurant, you know, as a manager, and that's your day to day. But that okay, then you still have mental health that you need to nurture. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I, it's I think it's really good to get that out. You know, and like and for me. This this is one of those things that mm-hmm. Studio Forty Seven coming and talking to you or you coming and talking to me rather. That this is a therapy for me, you know, and that's that's happy to help. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, what, 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 what do you charge again? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> We're just talking about that. <laughs> Somebody asked me to play, um, uh, sing some harmonies with them on their show, and I'm like, they're like, what do you charge? And I'm like, I have no clue how to answer that question. <laughs> You're like, all, all, all of it? A lot? <laughs> all the things. <laughs> I'll do it for a bucket of chicken and a bus pass. I swear to God. I just, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me sing for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was an opportunity that your download was telling you that about. That was my download, yeah. yeah. I got that text message. So that was cool. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, mental health is good. It's very important to be aware. And I know that's a... It's always been a huge issue with you. And I... <clears throat> I'm not saying mental health issues with you specifically, but I meant that topic. Thank you for uh, clarifying the, that. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> the topic of mental health. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I had, a, I had my very best friend since the sixth grade um, completed suicide when we were 27. So that was, that was 
a huge kickoff for me. And like, I've always struggled with, you know, basic, uh, us girl problems, like eating disorders and things like that and body dysmorphia and, um, her passing really just kind of kicked it into gear for me that it's, I can't, I can't like put this off anymore. Like I have to address it. And, um, and then postpartum kicked my butt into like next Tuesday. And so I, I went on some drugs and they're amazing. I feel like I'm back to my old self and I didn't know that I could feel this way anymore. Like really? So pharmaceuticals helped you in that, yes. in that sense. Yes. Pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Not, not marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found crack and I've been great ever since. It's amazing. I get I just, so much done during the day. <laughs> <laughs> and my life is burning around me and I don't care. It's awesome. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I, um, in, and it turns out I might have ADHD. It's not completely diagnosed, but my therapist is like a little suspect. <laughs> and the drug that I'm taking is actually for people with ADHD and it's helping me a lot. So, well, yeah, and that's <laughs> much like anything, it's a spectrum, you know, like, right. you know, it, when you have ADHD, you're not like, okay, well, we need to put you on Ritalin now, you know, like yeah. there's, there's different forms of ADHD that, you know, as I said, a spectrum of it, you know, that, anybody almost everybody could fall on mm -hmm. um when it comes uh back to the pharmaceuticals obviously it hasn't really like inhibited your creative process no if anything so, it's opened it up see yeah the reason why i bring that up is because i'm um years ago before you and i met i went on these like antidepressants mm -hmm. and i thought they helped me Mm -hmm. But then I realized that I just had no desire to create anything. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I, I was, I felt like, I, I, I don't know if it was a placebo thing. Like, I thought it was helping me. I don't know. But ever since then, like, when I stopped taking them, and then I started, you know, it kind of kicked into gear. Like, okay, now I feel like that wall's down. You know, I can, I can create again. Yeah. You know, and so I've always been against taking medications. Sure. You know, and... That for me personally, so like when I hear a success story, you know, I'm, I'm curious about that. Well, I used to be miss like holistic, organic, everything. Like I never like eh, drugs. Mm, you're just not exercising enough. I was like so ridiculous, and now you, you didn't judge me for my bowl sitting on the table out there, did you? No, no, not at all. No. I just really thought that like all your problems could be solved through exercise and meditation and and good nutrition and i'm not saying that those don't play a huge role but sometimes you need a little help to get there like i i'm one i'm curious were you on ssris serotonin reuptake i have no idea do you remember I, the name of it no it's I and mean, we're talking almost a decade ago okay. and it was a very short time yeah because i started on the ssris which is what they usually give people for depression and um, so that's increasing your serotonin. Uh, it turns out my serotonin was fine because all it did was make me super sleepy. And I was like, I had an infant and I was like trying to like sleep nine hours a night and take like a three hour nap. And it's just like, no, I can't sleep this much. Like, this is crazy. Um, yeah, so that wasn't it. And what I'm on now is like a dopamine thing. So um, it's well butrin and it just... I just, I don't know. It's, it helps with everything. I, 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 I could see that. Yeah. It, it, it's like, like it helps ignite your, your own dopamine. Like it, it gives you like a supplement of dopamine. Like how, how does that work exactly? I don't know. Exactly. I haven't researched. I'm wondering, <laughs> I don't know if it's like the reuptake where it just kind of keeps it in your system longer. I'm not sure. Um, I would have to look that up, but, um, cause that's definitely like something, an area of focus that I've always been especially of recent to pay attention to in my own excitement of things. Okay. What's a dopamine hit here? You know, like, do I need to be really this excited about it? Chill out, back off, <laughs> you know, like yeah. approach this a little differently, you know, because I have to be aware because I'll, I'll get really excited about things and then I'll just run with it. Next thing you know, I've skipped, you know, like 15 steps to get to this point, And then I'm like running from the hills of my feet from there, you know, like, yeah. that, I mean, that's, that's what I did with music. You know, when I first, 
start doing music full time. Like I was put in a position where I had a choice and like, I just got so excited and I built this brand, Stevie K and all this stuff. And like, I'm like three months in, I'm like, I have no clue what I'm doing. What have I done? <laughs> like, I have no clue what I'm doing. Like, I, I didn't even have a soundboard when I started. You know, I didn't have speakers. You know, I didn't have anything. But I said, I'm going to do this. I just leaped without looking. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, but, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty good at like, you know, running on the heels of my feet, you know, that, that stress is like, okay, I have to do this by like tomorrow. I have to get yeah, this stuff out of here. I got to send 150 different. emails every day, you know, and see, you know, maybe I'll get five yeses back and that's, that's, that's rent. But that's why you burn out too, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, that sort of mentality only lasted the first year, but yeah, yeah you know, the second and third year was very, very easy. I didn't, I very rarely had to reach out to anybody. So that was, it worked out well, but, but the point was, is that, I have to be careful of that because I'll leap without looking sometimes. But now I'm like getting to the edge, like, you know, scooting, like, er, okay, hold up. Let me look down here real quick. (laughs) See, Clark does that for me. He's my, he's my check man. He's like, okay, back it up a couple steps. Let's think about this realistically. I love Clark. He, he's always so supportive of you. He is. You know, and I, I, I know that's, that's not an easy job. No. <laughs> and I'm not saying, again, with you specifically. I'm talking about, like, with, with I do overly, creative, over, overly creative people. Yeah. They can be very uh, – it, it has to be f- in some sort of way entertaining for him, mm-hmm. you know, to enjoy it. You know, yeah. like, to sit back and be like, oh, here, here she goes. Again, again. All right. <laughs> uh, what name is it this time? Ember Solis. Okay. okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. Can we reutilize the equipment we got for RZA? No? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Actually, I have used a lot of them, so that's good. Yeah, is that how you're making your videos and stuff? Uh, well, I'm, I've been hiring a professional videographer for that. Oh, um, nice. So that helps. Um, I do have my green screen tucked away, but the, like the lights and my editing skills obviously have come into into play, so that's nice. Yeah, he's amazing, and I don't know. I'd probably be homeless without him or living with my parents because <laughs> he just – Keeps me focused in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when you and I first joined into a group together. I was, I, 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 I wanted to make sure I did my very best to make sure Clark was comfortable. Yeah. You know, because I understand like how that could like, oh, I'm going to send my wife off with these two guys I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, to play music in some dude's basement. Mm-hmm. You know, like. I know. You know, that I think I, like, I, from the very beginning, I'm like, well, you have new brothers now. Yeah. Brothers. Brothers. You know, yeah. like I was very specific to say that to you. And that's what it felt like yeah. immediately. You know, because. Except for, you know. Well. Doofus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and in all, I, I hope Doofus, that's a good one. We'll just call him Doofus. Yeah. I, I hope Doofus is doing well. Me too. I like, I really. I hope he turned his life around i hope he came ugly. became self-aware that was his biggest issue yeah. he just wouldn't he had nothing was his fault ever yeah but i won't go too deep into that but yeah i i, I wish him best i really do Same. Yeah. you know i i hope he eats but he can not sit at my table so that's nice i like that <laughs> <laughs> i think i read it for uh, tupac said that or something i don't know but <laughs> nice <laughs> so uh where can we find Ember Solis now, like, do you guys have shows coming up or are you streaming regularly somewhere that we can put in the link description below or, um, so you can follow me. I will always post our gigs on Ember Um, right now I don't have anything booked because we have our new guitarist, so we're getting him caught up with everything. And we have another 10 songs that we're ready to introduce to the band too. So we're trying to just like beef up what we have, a, we have about an hour of stuff right now. We're trying to get up to two hours. Right, but, you, but you'll be up, yeah, you know, like Bossies, you know. Yeah, every yeah. Now you get I would say like probably in August we'll be out there again. Okay. Um, I have like three or four places, honestly, that are like have heard me singing. Like I went up on stage with um, Paul and Suk. They were playing at, oh gosh, oh, not Bottoms Up. What's the name of it? Oh, oh Bottoms Up. That's why I ran over Mike. No, 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 no. What is it? Last Call. Last Call in Dublin. Um, I just went up and sang a little bit with them, and the the sound guy was like, "You have a gig here anytime." I'm like, cool. nice. I well, will you, take you up on that. <laughs> you, yeah, you yeah, you're you're an amazing vocalist. Like I was, I, I was very honored that you sang with me. You know, I always <laughs> tell people, I'm like, dude, she 
made me sound good. Like you, like you, you, your harmonies are just amazing. And it's like, I envy that. Like, I wish I could do that, but since I can't and you're really good at it, can you just do all of them? Can Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciated your guitar skills cause my, mine are not up to par. <laughs> oh yeah. You're welcome for the basic skills that I have in that area. <laughs> None of your music theory though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, well, Aunt, is there anything else you want to talk about or, uh, no, we talked about some really deep shit. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> and some not so deep shit. So that's good. <laughs> I, I, I think this is like the most I've crammed in the, like this amount of time ever in a conversation. <laughs> this is why I enjoy talking with you because once we get that you know initial, we haven't seen each other in a while, you know, out of the way. Yeah, we it just it's like we're just hanging out like, like six years ago. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so well, I appreciate you so much for coming in. Thank I don't you. want to take up any more of your time. Um, but please send me all the links. I want I want them in the description because there's so many different. Even I want the hippos, <laughs> I, I want the rizzas. You know, I want to just send them to me uh, right. as soon as you can because I, I, I think anyone listening should should really dive down the. Maybe I'll make a sassy hippo sale. All oh, I would make my day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Aunt uh, Ember, Rizza, whatever, <laughs> whichever one I'm talking to now. <laughs> I mean that. Uh, Embenizza, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks and for having me. Yep, all the links will be in the bottom. So, see you. Bye.